Come on, goats. It's never easy filming with animals. And of course, you know, they have like 20 acres to go graze this way. So they go that way, which is my parents' five acres. Goats. Hi, I'm Mike, and this is Jess, and welcome to Goodwin's Farm 207. Today we'd like to talk to you about uh, five ways how we have made money on our hobby farm. So uh, it's been a little bit since we've done a vlog post where we've just kind of had a conversation with you guys and we thought it'd be this would be a great topic to talk about some ways that you can bring in money to help support your hobby farm or homestead. You'll see today we're actually out in one of our um, rotational grazing pastures with our goats. They're kicking around so don't mind them if they interfere. So uh, this blog post we're actually going to be doing uh, in reverse so make sure you stick around to the end to see the number one way that we have brought money into our homestead yeah anyone who has done any sort of farming or homesteading knows that there's not a lot of money to be made um, these ideas that we have are not ways that anyone can get rich quick um, but they are ways that you can generate some, in some income to help support the homestead or the hobby farm that you have yeah, I think you'll find watching our channel, we try to take a really realistic approach to what we're doing and how we're doing it. We don't know everything, um, but these are just some realistic ways that we've brought a little bit of extra income into help support our hobby farm or homestead. What the heck are they doing over there? <laughs> it's good boss, okay. So the five ways that we have found you could bring in some extra income on your hobby farm or homestead, the number five reason is poop. Yeah, I thought she was crazy when she said we were going to sell poop by the road, but <laughs> we couldn't keep enough of it available for people who wanted to buy it. Whether it was cow manure or bunny poop, it was just one of those really surprising things. The one thing I did find about it, it, it does seem to be seasonal. You sell a lot more in the spring and early summer than you would necessarily in the fall because people are using them for their gardens. Their rabbit poop definitely sold the best. So if you have rabbits or are considering getting them, don't waste their poop. The number four reason or way that you can make money on the farm is by selling animals. So we haven't made as much money on this as we possibly could have partly because well I keep more than I should um, but there that is one way that we have brought in extra income is selling the offspring of our animals that we currently have whether it's rabbits or goats or cows or whatever you happen to be raising a lot of people hatch out chicks as well if you wanted to um, get into that and we have brought in some income doing that and like I said we probably could have brought in a lot more but I tend to keep a lot. <laughs> yeah, when we had rabbits, we did sell quite a few rabbits because, you know, they we had a few litters and mm -hmm. those sold pretty well. Um, but it is something to keep in mind, especially if chicken math happens to strike your farm or homestead. Um, if you wind up with a surplus of birds, uh, there's always people that are looking to... Um, to <laughs> the goat almost ripped their microphone cord. Yeah, they're all, but there are always people who are looking to buy birds that have already been hatched and raised for a little bit, you know, where some of the, the work is already done. And, yeah. you know. Again, it does tend to, tend to be seasonal, where you're going to sell more in the spring and the summer. A lot of people in the fall are looking to offload their animals, getting ready for winter. So it's just something to keep in mind if you are looking to sell your offspring. Um, definitely make sure you know your market in your local area and what times they sell the best so that you're not stuck feeding something through the winter that you weren't anticipating. That's happened. It has. And the number three reason, or I guess start there, and the number three way. <laughs> Let's not word it that way. The, the third, third way, way <laughs> that we have made money or brought in some extra income on the farm is selling eggs. Now, I know that sounds pretty common. A lot of people sell eggs and you think, well, that's overdone. But especially with the egg shortage this last year, we have been able to sell quite a bit of eggs. In fact, we have enough regular customers now that we really don't even have to advertise um, 
that again is our local area. Make sure you check out your own local regulations and restrictions on all of this stuff. Make sure you do your homework and find out what eggs are selling for in your area. Um, we also happen to have a really nice front uh, road frontage on our property so it's pretty easy for people to find us and swing in and grab a dozen on their way to the local grocery store. Yeah, and it's nice. Uh, this year we've had a lot of success with eggs, probably the most we've had since we've started. And we have a couple of regular customers that, you know, will come to us specifically to get our eggs, which is really cool. Yeah, and again, that's three years into this, so that may not be something that year one you have a lot of success with, but we have, seen, we have definitely built up quite a bit of success for that. Um, one thing to keep in mind though is for us we probably could have made a little bit more money on our eggs than what we have uh, but we really when we started this farm homesteading journey we really wanted to be a contributor to our area's food um, you know independence if you will rather than a drain on it so a lot of our prices we do try to keep as low as possible so that um, it's helpful for the people in our community to be able to purchase our products yeah and there's been some egg shortages lately um, maybe you know in the past few months and being able to supply farm fresh eggs to uh, not just ourselves because we reap the benefits of that but also to the, our, our community has been good and keeping the prices low uh, I think is something that our customers appreciate as well because uh, when we have all experienced when there's a shortage on something the price goes up um, but ours you know we keep pretty steady uh, because we feel the impact of inflation as well and we don't want to pass that on so as long as we're recovering you know something to help you know, offset the cost of feed or whatnot then we consider that good. Yes. Uh, number two, the, the second best way that we have found to make money on the homestead is to sell crafts. Uh, Jess is pretty crafty. She likes to do a variety of different things like sewing and whatnot. And we have had some good success selling the little things that she makes. Yeah, and Michael's actually an uh, author as well. So he actually writes stories. He's a horror author, and he does get a lot of inspiration from our animals. If you've read any of his books, you'll know that most of the animals are actually named after animals we currently have or have had on the farm. Yeah. So that is another way that we've brought some additional income into to help support our this lifestyle that we I love and he's quickly becoming a lover of. <laughs> I'm getting more into it as time goes on and it's nice to have something that you can do to help support the homestead when you're not actually doing something you know farm chore wise you know during the winter when there's a lot less outside work to do that's when you know Jess gets a little bit more crafty and I have a little bit more time to to write so you know it's a good indoor task that you can do to help generate some money. Some bonus ways before we get to the number one way that we actually bring income into uh, to help support our homestead or hobby farm uh, is, and these are ways that we haven't necessarily tried, but we've seen some people in our local area have success with, because one thing you'll find as you start your hobby farm and homesteading is it's a community. There's a lot of people out there and we've found they all are willing to help you learn. They all want to see you be successful because this is a way of life. This is something that we believe in and we want to be more self-sustaining. We want to give back to our communities and our environment. And um, that support is wonderful. So some of the other ways that we've seen uh, other hobby farms or homesteaders bring in some additional income to their farm is selling seedlings. So if you're a gardener, which most of you that have watched our channel know that I'm not the best gardener, although I try really, really hard. I, I love the idea of it, but for some reason the, my green thumb isn't quite there, but I'm working on it. A for effort. That's right. Um, some of the other ways is they actually rent out their farm equipment. Again, you'll want to look at your local area and re restrictions on this and what you have for code in your specific area. But a lot of people will rent money from, get money from renting like chicken pluckers to rototillers to farm tractors, whatever they happen to have, which 
another way people that make money is they actually will go do the rototilling for people's gardens or you know they'll put up fencing they market some services to help also bring in some additional money on their homestead or for to help support their hobby farm all right so one more bonus way that it's not necessarily a way you can make money but you can save money yeah and that's you know trying to find free or cheap materials that you can use around your homestead to accomplish the different projects um, for me I'm pretty lucky and I have a wife who likes to spend a lot of time on Facebook marketplace trying to find free things or ridiculously cheap things um, so you know that's definitely a way that we have made things happen around here uh, that have been you know very affordable and some things you wouldn't have been able to do if she hadn't have found you know certain materials or items through the wonder of Facebook marketplace or Craigslist or, or Craigslist. you know on the side of the road people put stuff out on trash day that they don't want but I can use so yeah it's kind of that old idiom a penny saved is a penny earned and that's a philosophy that I kind of grew up with and definitely makes it a little bit more affordable for us to have a little bit more on our homestead as far as animals go uh, because there is a cost when it comes to building shelters or fencing and things like that so one man's trash is another farmer's treasure exactly yeah the number one way that we have found to bring in money to support our homestead is that we both work full-time jobs that's right and I know like when you're starting out on this homesteading journey hobby farming you're like wow this is great I'm gonna go buy this off-grid cabin somewhere and live off the land and you know get out of the machine of working every day but the reality is there's a lot of costs that's associated when you start a hobby farm or you start homesteading um, and especially if you have livestock like we do and we got into this as kind of a hobby and it just grew from there and when you have livestock or you know anything like this, anything that's living on your farm you have to pay for it there's vet bills there's everyday costs there's feed and you have to have a way to make sure that they're provided for as well as your family so especially when you're starting out you know you are going to find like a lot of the ways you're bringing in income is still your regular nine to five workday job. So we are not at the point where we can quit our jobs and go full time yet, although that is the goal. Um, but, you know, that that is something that we do and we do use money to pay for this lifestyle. Yeah. And, you know, it's a juggling act. Sometimes there's a lot of things that we like to you know to try to accomplish every spring and summer while the weather is nice and you have to prioritize you know what projects need to happen versus you know what projects you want to do and make the time that you have outside of work outside of family obligations you know work the best for you so for us you know the weekends are the sweet spot you know we try to get a lot done on the weekends uh, you know weekdays after work it's hit or miss uh, sometimes we're just both wiped out after, you know, the daily grind where we just, you know, keep things simple and just make sure that everybody's squared away and, you know, that's all we do for the day. But sometimes, you know, we'll throw together a pigeon coop or move an animal from one spot to another or, you know, whatever the, whatever the need is, you know, it's all about making the time that you have work the best for you. Yeah, so I mean, if, if that's a little disappointing, don't get frustrated. Um, you know, there are ways that you can make money from your homestead to help support it. You certainly don't have to have as big of an operation either if you're just doing vegetables or fruit trees, things like that. Obviously, that's a little bit, you know, there's a cost of putting in your trees and things like that, but you wouldn't have the cost of raising your livestock. So it's just something to think about and plan. Your homestead is also how are you going to pay for things? How are you going to care for things? hopefully you found these tips helpful you know there's lots of ways that you can make money on the homestead but these are just the the top five that we came up with that we thought would be beneficial to share with you yeah i mean again one of the things that we try to do is be very honest with our journey and the how things have been for us these are the top ways that we support our lifestyle of hobby farming and homesteading and that's how we 
bring in the most income to help support that so that we can continue to do this. Uh, if you found this helpful or if you would like to continue to follow our journey, then please make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you're notified when we post new videos. We do want to uh, post a vlog post every week and we also usually post a how to farming video of some kind yeah. once a week as well. So, and then some shorts of our animals just being ridiculously cute. Yeah, if there's any content you'd like us to share with you that we, you know, maybe have talked about or haven't gotten to yet, just leave a comment below and we'll do our best. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.